So this is weird. I connected this tiny millimeter wave sensor here, consuming 0.4 watts. It tries to start only to realize that it doesn't want to start. I'm in the process of designing my perfect smart home power over ethernet room sensor. The first feature that I tested was the movement sensor. I'm using a pretty expensive Panasonic movement sensor that is pretty tiny, but it works really good. The only downside is the detection angle. Now the nice thing is Panasonic offers a wide range of different sensors and all of them share the same footprint. So I could use a sensor with different characteristics on my PCB, but my idea is to also do something else. And that is using millimeter wave sensors. And so I prepared a connector for my millimeter wave sensor here. That one is an LD2420. I picked this one because it runs on 3.3 volts, but I later realized there are better options that run on five volts and the IO voltage is still 3.3 volts, which is great because in my case, this whole system runs on an ESB32. So my IO voltage is 3.3 volts and I already have a very powerful five volts rail here on the PCB. One reason I switched is also because this one isn't working <laughs> and I don't know why. It's definitely not hardware because I designed the hardware, so it has to be software. Sure. I switched to LD2410. It sounds like a downgrade, but it's actually more powerful as far as I know. I removed the 3.3 volts connection and directly connected VCC of my small sensor here to my 5 volt rail. I connected it to my ethernet and it just didn't work. The 5 volt rail stayed at zero. So as you can see, it tries to start. But it doesn't really want to. And usually this behavior looks like there is too much load. I also look directly at the AC input. Yeah, and it shows something similar. Turns on, turns off. It jumps around and then it goes back to zero. So let's unplug this poor boy. I connected this tiny millimeter wave sensor here and it prevents the whole thing from starting. This doesn't sound good. And it turns out the whole PCB was barely starting because I made a mistake. It all comes down to the power read and the power supply. It consists of this chip here that is our PoE powered device controller. It has multiple functions. For example, detection, classification, under voltage lockout, but also an inrush limiting feature. And this inrush limiting feature is exactly what's the problem here. The DC DC converter immediately turns on and draws a lot of current. And then the inrush current limiter kicks in and says, hey, hey stop, it's too much. And it turns off the power. And then after four seconds, it tries again. And the DC-DC converter again is super happy that there is finally voltage and draws current as much as possible. And this is again too much for the inrush limit and then it turns off again. And so what we need here is we need to ramp up the voltage and only turn on the DC-DC converter after the voltage has ramped up and is stable. Then we can turn on the DC-DC converter. And in fact, this is exactly how the previous version worked before I added this DC input here. Because the previous version had a connection between the power good pin of the PoE controller and this enable pin of the DC-DC converter. If we look at the datasheet, this chip includes a power good circuit and at one can signal that the load capacitor is fully charged. This pin is intended as an enabled signal for downstream circuitry. And it even tells you exactly what's happening in my case, if the converter tries to start up while inrush is active and draws a current equal to the inrush limit, a latch up condition occurs in which it never successfully starts. And so the first inrush current is caused by these capacitors that need to be charged and as soon as they are charged the power good signal is released and then the DC DC converter can turn on and everything is great. And the reason why I disconnected this here 
was that we have this DC input. And my fear was that if we add a DC input and this chip decides that the power isn't good, then this signal here will stay low and the DC-DC converter will never turn on. But in fact, it's not the case because I tried it. This thing is basically dead. If we get external voltage, this thing is completely dead and it doesn't prevent the DC-DC from running. It is also protected by this diode. So there is no current flowing into this thing. The only concern that I have is that basically the enable pin has an internal pull-up resistor. There is a small voltage here, around three volts. That might cause a current flow into this chip and maybe charging this supply voltage until eventually this thing turns on, realizes that the power isn't good, turns off everything that needs to be prevented. So I need to be careful here. Maybe I need to add a discharge resistor here because there is basically no resistor because they are not placed. I might add a small resistor between these two lines here. But it's time to fix this board. Okay, moment of truth. Super stable voltage. So the problem is fixed. It is now capable of starting with load attached and it's finally time to test this thing. So I will not assemble a full case. Instead, I will just use the first ring to mount this to my ceiling. This is only for testing. So the wife acceptance factor is no concern. Let's prepare ESP home. So I removed everything from this configuration. There is just network, web server, UART and new millimeter wave sensor configuration. And then I get presence, moving target, steel target. Maybe I can turn on a light if someone is detected. Let's copy this light also here. And I would like to get the light feedback here. So it should now turn green if presence is detected. It's green. <laughs> okay. If I go. It turns off. That looks good. So let's test this in the field. Also one nice feature, it has a presence detection. So if I just sit there, it still recognizes me. The infrared sensor on the other hand would have a very hard time detecting me because it reacts to temperature changes in different zones. So if I go from one zone to another zone, then this temperature change is detected. For example, on the toilet, this is amazing. And again, you can tweak the settings. You can tweak the turn off delay. Pretty cool. And just to give you an idea of how sensitive this thing is, the yellow line here is where the Panasonic passive infrared sensor detected my movements. And this red line here is where the millimeter wave sensor detected my movements. Not bad, right? One downside of this millimeter wave sensors is the power consumption and also that they're a little bit slower in theory than the infrared detector. If you are interested in my project, please head over to playduino.com slash sensor and sign up. I will let you know as soon as they are available. 
This thing has way more features than just this millimeter wave sensor. So definitely check out my playlist if this stuff is interesting for you. If you like this content, it would help my channel a lot if you could hit like and subscribe. Also sharing is very much appreciated. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.